Hello everyone, today I'm going to be playing a first person shooter, which is a real surprise here, but here's the interesting thing about this shooter. This particular game came out one week before Doom did, December 3rd, 1993 to be exact, whereas Doom came out on December 10th, 1993. Once again, you may have noticed I have turned off the music because I do not like to talk over the game music. Oh. Of course, so I got to go back here and show you the exact locations of uh, where you'll be going, which is kind, of, which is, in my opinion, semi coming to see uh, what you're going to be attacking. And in this case, we're going to look at the Star Institute. Now, one thing about this mugshots is that I think they kind of screwed up somewhere. Like if you take a look at level one of novice agent, he looks like he looks like he's in a looks like he's panicking. He's like, help me. Whereas these two are more correct. He's like, yeah, I'm confident. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's like, like, oh man, this is not fair. Whereas this one is more like he's in berserk mode. But for the sake of this vlog, we're gonna go at level two. Accessing current location, Star Institute General Operations. Now, this is something that's also kind of uncommon, where you get a uh, briefing before you head out into the field. Agent Stone, reports confirm that Goldfire is... Oh, Goldfire is the main villain, by the way. Aware of your arrival. My sensors indicate movement towards the ninth floor shuttle bay. Sir, I can only ex extrapolate... Sorry about that. From past behavior to determine Goldfire's current intent. Assessment, Dr. Goldfire plans to flee the Institute. Shocker. He realizes you are a threat to his plan and perceives an increased measure of personal safety on the floating fortress. Even bigger shocker. Control of greater destructive capabilities is a certainty as well. <clears throat> Proceed to floor 9. Kill the spider mutant guardian alien of the Star Institute. And take the shuttle to the next link in Goldfire's operation, the Floating Fortress. You will receive additional instructions when you arrive at the fortress complex. Informant biotechs have been located throughout the Star Institute. Information, ammo, and tokens may be obtained from these individuals. If I may offer an opinion, think before you shoot. Yes, sir. Good luck, sir. Idle Reba end. I kind of wonder what that second to last uh, statement was going to say. But anyways, let's get started. Medic! One thing I really like that is a nice touch is that there's a heartbeat down there right below your EKG. Now, in case if anybody's unfamiliar with EKG stands for, that starts for electrocardiogram, which, if I remember correctly, measures the electrical pulse in a heartbeat, or something along those lines. Now, going back to what I said before about the release date, it was a bit of a shock to see that this game came out before Doom because I thought it was going to be the other way around. But, nope, I was wrong. Now, the real kicker is that this game actually got eclipsed thanks to Doom's success, which is really not surprising to say the least. But to its credit, Doom does, or this game, excuse me, has a lot of, a. Uh, original ideas that you saw right there. You can actually get food from uh, vending machines. And you can also interact with NPCs. But there's a bit of a catch when it comes to these vending machines. You have to use them sparingly. Because once they're gone, they're gone. And to be honest, I kind of like the game this way with no music playing in the background. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jeez, I should not have gotten that close. Now, as I was saying before, yeah, you gotta use these health kits very sparingly. Because as you just saw just a few moments ago, I got a little too close to those guys right there. I almost got myself killed. Of course, this is all before mouse aiming. Where you're only stuck facing two directions. In front of you, behind you, actually, yeah, on your X and I believe your Z axis. Yes, because Y axis is actually directly up and down. If any of you have taken third dimensional math, you would know that. It's also kind of funny that you're eating raw meat off the floor. Ugh. I mean, who would? I know I wouldn't. And as you may have noticed, I've actually used using my map so many times throughout the level. Well, actually, just throughout the whole game in general, because I don't like being uh, sidetracked. Actually, I don't like getting lost, because that's very time consuming. As you can see right there, I accidentally shot an innocent man. And that actually does hinder performance, but for the sake of this vlog, I'm going to do it anyways. I don't feel like starting over. So this is a rare example of think before you act. As you saw just a few moments ago, I shot that informant for no apparent reason. Now, it's funny is that you don't lose points or you take damage or whatever. Plus, you also don't gain a bonus at the end. I had to hit you with my notepad. Oh, I think one thing I also forgot to mention on higher difficulties, vending machines are more likely to be out of order. Of course, like I've stated before, you can't make the game too easy now, can ya? Can ya? 
I mean, I could go for the 100% of finding all points right now, but for the sake of this vlog, I think we're just going to move on. Because, I mean, despite the fact that these levels may not look big, there's a lot to explore. And that actually does eat up a lot of time. Anyways, I think it's time to move on to the next floor. So basically, one original concept this game has is that most shooters do not is that you can't just go from point A to point B willy-nilly. Nope. In the case of this game, you actually have to find a red card to unlock the next floor. Which, I'm, to my knowledge, this is the only game that has that kind of concept. Now, one other concept I should mention is that you can go back to the previous floor and pick up health packs if you have to. But like I said before, you got to use them sparingly. Because once they're gone, they're gone. As you can see, that time I actually interrogated him a little bit before I moved on. <laughs> of course, one thing these informants... I don't like about the informants is that they tell you what you already know. It's like, yeah, thanks. It's after hours. You'd better be leaving. Guard! Oh! One other thing that also kind of bothers me is that, uh, how exactly do these scientists get access to weapons anyways? I mean, it's like, whoever they hire, uh, okay, yeah, you're going to be a scientist. Here you go. Here's your pistol. Oh, you're going to be security level one. Yeah, here you go. Here's your gun as well. Is Dr. Goldfire really that desperate for protection? I mean, I don't know. Hard to say.
And I died. What a shocker. But what's nice is that even if you die, you get to keep your stuff. Where it's not like in other games, whereas if you die, and you have to start over from square one. Boy, just that little guy alone did me in. And it, I've always keep saying, it's not the big threats you should be worried about. It's the little ones. Because they're the ones that cause more trouble. Oh, one thing I also didn't mention is that the interrogation process is random. You'll never know who you'll be speaking to. So it's once again, think before you shoot. There's these big green guys here, whom I like to refer to as broccoli monsters. I mean, they're big, they're green, and they kind of resemble broccoli. Probably a good uh, way of saying, kids, eat your vegetables, otherwise they're going to transform into monsters and they're going to eat you. Ugh. If I ever have kids, 
That's exactly what I'm going to say if they refuse to eat their vegetables. Wait, it's these secret walls within secrets. It's like, I would like to meet the uh, architect who designed this place. It's like, okay, what was your purpose going into this? Like, why are you having so many secret rooms? That'd be one question I'd ask. So I come, come all the way over here just to fight a few measly monsters and just collect a few bags of money. Oh, what purpose did this accomplish? Answer, absolutely nothing. But hey, at least it's worth something. Well, at least I managed to uh, keep every single informant alive, fortunately. 
I do have a little bit of time to spare. See if I can find some more of these secret rooms. Look, I got my extra life. Very nice. I always knew there were more rooms here. I don't think there's much else to explain or for me to comment on, so I think we're just gonna head to the level or the end of the level and then we'll call it from there. I think that's going to do it for this session of uh, DOS Vlog. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see everybody next time.